Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do these three easy algebra problems. I'm going to solve them uh, step by step, but uh, really the point of this video is not to have you watch me solve these problems. Okay, obviously I know how to solve these problems. I want to see if you can solve these problems, and uh, you should be able to um, handle these particular problems if you have completed algebra. Now, if you are currently studying algebra, then you're going to uh, be learning this stuff, but uh, depending on where you're at, uh, in your math education, you should be able to handle this stuff, especially if you're in any sort of algebra course. Now, um, if you don't know uh, what's going on here, don't panic. You know, watch the video, learn something, then I'll give you some uh, additional guidance on uh, not only these topics, but just in algebra in general. Uh, so I'm going to get to these problems step by step in just one second. But again, uh, to make the most out of this video, I would suggest that you pause it and go ahead and see what you know and don't know with these uh, three questions. I would give your, um, if you were in my classroom and this was a little pop quiz, I would give you no more than say five minutes, okay? So, you know, if you wanna take five minutes or a couple, one or two minutes to play around with these problems, I would certainly encourage that. But uh, before we get going, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over uh, several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math courses there is. Now, it's not just one course. My, really, it's a math program, and I have over 100-plus different math courses. So those range from pre-algebra. Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, very shortly. So those of you who are in advanced mathematics, I want to check that out. I'm uh, really excited about that course because it gives me a chance to really, you know, do some advanced math, which I love. But um, anyways, I also have a ton of courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ASVAB, CLEP exam, Alex, AccuPlacer, maybe a teacher certification exam or nursing school entrance exam, all those exams I mentioned have maths components to them. And if you don't do well in the math sections, you don't do well on the exam. So we don't want that to happen. So if you need help or assistance, just go to my website. Again, the link will be in the description of this video. You can check out my full course catalog. Now, if I don't have your exam, drop me a line in my contact form and I will help you out the best I can. Um, I also uh, work with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help those of you out that are just having a tough time in your current math course. Now, if you are serious about learning math, and hopefully you are if you're checking out this video, then you must do this, okay? Over decades of teaching mathematics, it's just a golden rule, okay? Those students who take great math notes almost always do very well, okay? It shouldn't be a surprise because to have great math notes, you must be uh, completely engaged and uh, extremely focused, all right? That's just the bottom line. And then the reverse is true. Those students who like to be on their cell phone, talking to their friends and doing homework for other classes while they're in their math class. You know, listen, I'm a teacher. I see what's going on. And of course, way back in the good old 1980s, I did all this stuff. You know, I was highly distracted. Of course, we didn't have cell phones, but that didn't make a difference because we were definitely uh, doing uh, stuff that we shouldn't have been doing. Of course, I would end up with grades like a C minus, and I would be like, what happened? So you know, uh, I get it. Right? There's a lot, ton of distraction uh, in a classroom. So the only way you're going to stay focused is to be engaged in acti activity that's going to keep you focused. And that is note taking. OK, so you got to take notes. Bottom line, that's it. But as you're uh, improving your note taking, I offer a detailed, comprehensive math notes to help you out. So those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video as well. All right, so let's take a look at our uh, three problems here. One, two, three. So I'll just, uh, uh, let me just erase all this here. So we can focus on the problems just to make sure you're crystal clear on them and then I will go through the solutions. So I have uh, f of x is equal to negative two uh, x squared minus x. I'd like you to evaluate this function for f of negative one. Okay, that should hopefully mean something to you. Our second question, we have six uh, x plus two y is equal to one. That is a line or a linear equation. I'd like you to tell me the slope of it. And then my uh, third question here is, <clears throat> excuse me, we have uh, 5 over 8 is equal to 3 over 6. Well, I'm asking you, is this a proportion? 
Okay, so uh, try to justify your answer. Just don't guess, you know, yes or no. Uh, give your, you know, have a justification there to back up whatever you're going to say. Okay, so I am going to get into the solution. So if you don't want to see them, go ahead and pause the video, but let's continue on here. And we'll take these one question at a time. Now, I'm not going to turn this into a complete full lesson on these topics. That's just too much. Um, so as I you know go through this, I just let me give you a couple quick uh, tips. So first of all, uh, hopefully you'll become a subscriber on my YouTube channel. If you are uh, already a subscriber, thank you very much. But I have tons of videos on all these topics. So this one here is about functions. So just go into my algebra, pre-algebra playlist. Again, if you're really serious and you like my teaching style and you really want to learn this comprehensively, then you might want to check out like my um, Algebra 1 course. That's probably the best course for uh, the things that we're discussing in, uh, with these th three particular problems. Okay, so let's get to our first problem. How do we find f of negative 1? Well, I got to plug in negative 1 into this function, meaning that I have to replace these x's with negative 1. Okay, so... That's going to look like this to start off. Now, if you did this, if you were like, okay, I understand uh, that this is what this means. If you understand that, that's very good. Okay, so that's a good start. However, where a lot of uh, students make a mistake is they mess up uh, with the order of operations and they get confused with these positive and negative numbers going on here. So let's go ahead and carefully simplify. So we have to use the order of operations. So we have to start with powers here. Okay, so let's just take this one step at a time, so negative 1 squared is what? That's a positive 1. So we have negative 2 times a positive 1. Now let's go ahead and address this right here. What's a minus uh, a minus 1 or negative of a negative 1? What is this equal to? Okay, hopefully you said positive 1. Okay, and if that's, you know, where you're at, that's well, very good. Okay, so let's continue on. So negative 2 times uh, this positive 1, that's negative 2 plus 1, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So the answer, f of negative 1, is negative 1. Okay, so if you got that right, I would suggest giving you a little happy face and a check mark. Okay, that's very good. It shows me that you know how to evaluate functions, you know, and at least have the basic idea of it, and you can kind of handle uh, these little positive and negative little minefields because that's what they are. This is where students uh, trip up. It's always in the details, okay? But uh, if you got that right, very good. Let's move on to the next problem. All right, so number two. Okay, so how do we find the slope of this line? Now, this is a line we can graph. So the easiest way uh, to solve this, there's an actual formula. Uh, we have to, first of all, understand that this line is written in standard form, okay? But there's another form we can write lines in, and you're probably very familiar with that. That's the y equals mx plus b form, and this is called slope-intercept form. It's probably the most common way that we like to write uh, lines. So we can uh, rewrite this line, okay, in this form. So how do we do that? we got to solve for y. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I'll show the work here. So if we solve for y, I can identify what m is, and you'll see this here in a second. All right, so to solve for y, I need to subtract 6x from both sides of the equation. Now, if you don't want to, don't know what I'm doing or why I'm doing it, then you got to check out my videos uh, on my channel about solving for uh, a specific variable and a formula. I've done a lot of videos on this topic because uh, students do, can, do get confused with how to do this. All right, so we got 2y is equal to, now I have 1 plus a negative 6 or negative 6 plus 1. But here's the thing, I don't want to write this as 1 minus 6x, okay? Uh, so what I want to do, remember the x component has to be first, so this is going to be negative 6x plus 1, okay? All right, so we're almost there. Give myself some more room. Okay, so how do I solve for y? Well, I just got to divide everything by 2, and I get y is equal to negative 3x plus one half. Okay, so negative six divided by two is negative three. So what is uh, my slope here? It is, <clears throat> excuse me, negative three. My voice is breaking up a little bit. Okay, so that is the answer. And if you got that answer uh, correct, and then, you know, let's go back to your smiley face and give you two check marks. Okay, very, very good. 
Now, if you um, did this in a different way, that's fine as well. By the way, too, I should have mentioned that um, you know you don't want to be using notes. Okay, this is all for memory. But you know, if you're using notes and referencing things, eh, that would be not what I would want to do. This is kind of a pop quiz. Uh, but listen, if you have notes and you reference them and you still got this right, well, you know what? Good for you. I, I think that's still pretty good. But uh, these are things that you should, um, you know, know by heart. Let's just say that much. Okay, so is this uh, a proportion? Well, we got to know what a proportion is. And the definition of a proportion is two equal fractions. So if I have a fraction one half, what's another fraction that's equal to one half? Well, let's say it's uh, four over eight. Four over eight is a fraction that is equal to one half. So these two are equal fractions. Of course, these uh, numbers are different, but if you have a valid proportion, we have something called the cross product. Okay, the cross product will be true. So if I multiply crosswise like this, one times eight, all right, that's gonna be equal to two times four, all right? So eight is equal to eight, that's true. So in a proportion, the cross product is true. So to check this, if this thing right here is a proportion, we need to just go ahead and check the cross product. So let's go ahead and go five times six. Is that equal to uh, three times eight? So five times six is 30. Is that equal to uh, three times eight, which is 24? That is the question. No, they are not equal. So therefore, this is not not a proportion. Okay, so if you said no, it's uh, it's not a proportion. You ha uh, you have to give me some sort of justification. Okay, now if you didn't know this and you're like, well, if I reduce this fraction and this is one half, and then you went into your calculator, <clears throat> excuse me, and you had like decimals here, that's okay. As a, uh, I would think that's a, a decent explanation. However, really, I wanted you to understand what the definition of a proportion is, and to use the cross product to check uh, to see if um, two fractions are indeed a proportion. Okay, so let's uh, talk about how you did. Now, if you got all three of these right, then I must in turn give you a happy face with a mohawk. Uh, and yes, this was pretty popular. I don't see many, well, maybe I'm not out and about enough, but back in the 1980s, well, you would go around, you'd see people with crazy mohawks. We used a lot of hairspray back in those days. Pretty much everybody, uh, everyone did. So, um, but anyways, you definitely deserve a Mohawk, uh, an A plus, and a 100%. So very good. Now I'm gonna give you like one star for this quiz because this is pretty uh, easy uh, stuff. But you know, this is where you should be at in algebra. Okay, especially you know anything. I would say if you're in a pre-algebra course, then maybe okay. Uh, this is stuff that you're still kind of learning, okay? But if you're definitely in an Algebra one course or a college-level Algebra one, introductory algebra, any kind of algebra other than pre-algebra, you should know this stuff, okay? Now, if you, uh, you know, are looking at this and thinking, well, I haven't studied that yet. Well, maybe you are, in fact, uh, you know, early in your course and you haven't studied this stuff yet, but you, you're going to need to know it, right? And you're going to need to remember it by heart. That's why it's so critical to take notes. But uh, again, if you uh, got all three of these right, that's very good. Um, now, let me give you some follow-on suggestions. Um, uh, but first of all, let me ask you, did you like this video? If you did, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And then obviously, please consider subscribing. But you want to continue forward here, practicing your mathematics. All right? Now you could do that. I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel organized from basic to advanced math. I have a lot of algebra videos. So that's one place uh, to start. Okay, You have to practice math. Watching math is not the same as you practicing it. So keep practicing. You will obviously get better. But uh, if you want additional help from me, and I would love nothing more to be your math teacher, my passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. But my best math help will be in my math help program. And obviously, if you're studying algebra, you'll probably want to uh, check out my Algebra 1 course. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.